Now let's go to Uganda where the verdict is due Thursday in the trial of 13 people accused of orchestrating the 2010 World Cup bombings in Kampala. At least 76 people were killed in those twin attacks almost six years on. Some of the survivors are still traumatized. CCTV's Isabel Nakiria has that story. Brenda Nanyonju always enjoyed watching soccer and the 2010 World Cup final was to be a highlight. But that night ended in terror when two bombs went off. The bombers targeted fans watching the game at two venues in the city. Brenda was among those caught up by one blast and then caught up in the panic. So as we were running out, first I fell, then I got up and started running out again. Then that's when I, I felt warm, warm something, like warm water flowing down my face, only to touch here and it was blood and it was coming from my head. Shrapnel from the blast is still buried in her head. Doctors say it's too dangerous to operate. So she has frequent headaches and going to soccer games now can be painful. It's time I'm in Nambo, they have to have earplugs or something to, to reduce on the noise in the, in the stadium because it's too loud, especially now when they score. The, the screaming and the ululation is too much. So I have to have like earbuds to reduce on that noise because it's, it affects me somehow. Here at the Chadonda Rugby Club, one of two places where the bombs went off. It's normal business, but to Brenda and all the others who were victims of that blast, it's a reminder of that dark day in July 2010. And coming back here for Brenda is one difficult thing. A monument has now been erected to those who died here. Somali group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attacks. Versions for Uganda's military involvement in Somalia. Thirteen people have been on trial, seven Ugandans, five Kenyans and one Tanzanian. Now almost six years on from that horrific night, Brenda and millions of other Ugandans are hoping finally to see justice. Isabel Nakiria, CCTV, in Kampala.